Hello, and welcome back to our study of Penine Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yezim Alameid, Shlita. Continuing our study in Ma'ala Sa'aretz, the attributes of Eretz Yisrael, in the merit of the brave soldiers of the IDF. They should be victorious and successful. It was a rough day yesterday, as we all know. And for Rafur Shalema, for all those who need healing, who have been affected, and of course for the safe return of each and every hostage as soon as humanly possible. The next chapter is Chet Hamaraglim. Shnei Chatoim Noraim Hoyal Yisrael Bamidbar. There were two grave sins committed by the Jewish people when they were in the desert. Chet HaEgel, Shabbosu Egel Masichavishtach Velo. The first one is the golden calf incident in Parshas Kisisa, where of course they made a golden calf and they bowed down to it. And then, of course, the sin of the spies in Parshas Shalach, where the people had their hearts melted by the advice or the negative advice, the negative word of the spies when they came back from their trip to Israel to check it out. And they said that the Jewish people will be unable to conquer the land. On many different levels, or from many different vantage points, we could say that the sin of the spies is far worse than the sin of the golden calf. And the sin of the golden calf, the Jewish people did not deny completely Hashem and Moshe, they didn't rebel entirely. Rather, they made a mistake and they thought that when Moshe did not return when he was supposed to return from Mount Sinai, they thought that Hashem would no longer cons- reveal himself in the way that he had been. So they needed a new intermediary. It wasn't that they were looking for a new God, they were looking for a new Moshe. Certainly, one would look at the opinion of the Ramban there in Chumash. And since they didn't rebel, they weren't completely denying and disregarding God. We see that the Jewish people were forgiven after the story of the Ege. But when it came to the sin of the spies, they completely denied the ability of Hashem in his controlling of the world and his ability to allow them to enter and conquer the land. And they rebelled completely against the main purpose why Hashem created the world and chose the Jewish people, which is what? To reveal the divine presence in the world via the land of Israel. Therefore, the sin of the spies was not forgiven. Anyone who partook, who was a partner, who had a chalik in that sin, it was decreed against them that they would die in the desert. And only the two spies, Kalev and Yehoshua, who spoke up against the other ten, they were Zoha, they merited going into the land of Israel. And that night, our tradition tells us that they cried about not going into the land of Israel, was the night of Tishabav. And Sanhedrin tells us, Hashem said, You cried for nothing, I'm going to give you something to cry about for all generations. And and therefore it was decreed that the Beis HaMikdash, not once but twice, would be destroyed on that date, and the Jewish people would be exiled from their land. We can ask a question. What sin did they actually commit to spies? Maybe they really thought that this nation of slaves didn't have the ability to conquer the land. Yuvas v'sakana terachef al kiyumo. If they're forced to war, they'll be defeated. 
and they'll have no more sustenance, they will cease to exist. So maybe they felt that they had some sort of moral obligation to warn them about the danger that was imminent. What's more important? The existence of the Jewish people or settling the land. Maybe they made the calculation that the existence of the people, which in their minds was in jeopardy, was more important. And let's say they were wrong. And maybe the Jewish people really did have the ability to conquer the land. Maybe we could argue that even though they were wrong, let's say they miscalculated, but nevertheless, they only had the best interests of the Jewish people at mind. They were trying to do a national responsibility, use of the term. So why do they have to be punished so stringently? Ella Rav says, rather the mistake was, their sin was, is that they didn't understand the true meaning, the depth, and exactly what Eretz Yisrael means, and they didn't love Israel. And since they didn't love the land, and since they didn't love the land, when they saw all the difficulties that would entail, that would follow when trying to conquer it, their hearts sank. And they found all sorts of rationalizations, all sorts of reasons why they would say that it's impossible to enter or to conquer the land. Until they convinced themselves that the Jewish people themselves would not have the ability to conquer the land. The Pasuk in Tehillim says, So that's one thing. In the Pasuk in Tehillim says that they did horrible things to the land of the, the, the beloved land, and they didn't have emuna, but Yehoshua and Kalev, who loved the land, it says, They said, no, the, the land is good, but it's ma'od ma'od very good. Despite all the challenges, the difficulties, the pitfalls that may lie ahead, nevertheless, their love of the land drove them. They said, Alona Allah, we can surely go up. We can inherit it because we certainly can. Therefore, it became clear that the right position here was with Yehoshua and Kalev. Had they only listened to Yehoshua and Kalev, then this entire generation would have merited to enter into the land. And it was only because of the bad Eitzah, these Maraglim, who themselves didn't love the land of Israel, as the Rav said, and he caused and melted and swayed everyone's hearts, and with their deceit, or with their self-deceit, that's why the people listened to this terrible advice. Here's a, a, a beautiful, lengthy note here. Um, it's worth looking into if you have the opportunity. But I think when it comes to Israel in general, we could look at every reason why we shouldn't go, why we shouldn't be there, why it's not going to survive, why it's wrong, and look at how the whole world looks at Israel. But in actuality, we have to have the opinion of Yehoshua and Kalev of Yechol Nuchala Alona Aleh, we certainly can go. And let's hope that during these days, when the world is turning against us, that we can share those same words, Alona Aleh, Nuchala. We certainly will be able to. We'll be victorious. We'll be on the right side of history when this is over. And we certainly will be better off for it. But in any event, thank you so much for listening. Keep diving for our soldiers. For Shalem ala Am Yisrael, a safe return of all the hostages. We need every single tefillah possible. Have a good day.